The confirmed number of cases of the coronavirus in Los Angeles County today comes to 70,476. The confirmed number of deaths reaches 2,832. Here in Torrance, the total number of confirmed cases is 435, with total confirmed deaths at 48. We anticipate those numbers to increase later today as the county updates the last 24-hour operating period. Welcome to COVID-19 Today. I'm Leslie Robbins. It's 4 p.m. on Saturday, June 13th. The Torrance Police Department continues to investigate an incident related to a woman caught on camera lashing out at other park goers, making racist remarks and threats. Our hope is that the members of our community will never have to endure such treatment. The Torrance Police Department held a press conference Friday afternoon sharing the latest information and identified the suspect who Torrance Police believes is responsible for three separate incidents that occurred in Torrance. Police identified the woman as 56-year-old Lena Hernandez. She is said to be a Long Beach resident with ties to Torrance. Hernandez is caught on camera lashing out at one woman exercising at a staircase at Wilson Park, making racial slurs, profanities, and threats. Another victim came forward also recording Hernandez on camera, making similar threats and racist comments in Wilson Park's parking lot. A third victim came forward and said she filed a report with the Torrance Police Department last year after the suspect attacked a custodian at Delamo Fashion Center. Hernandez was said to have also struck the Good Samaritan we can't who was trying to help. Like this that occur in our community, any time that any incident like this arises to the level where there is a crime, we will interact whenever possible. And you can't force somebody to report a crime if they don't want to, mm -hmm. but we will do whatever we possibly can to ensure that justice is brought and reports are our crimes are reported. Torrance Police Chief Eve Berg says a physical assault charge is possible and authorities are looking into possible mental health issues. Torrance Mayor Patrick Fury, along with Assemblyman Al Mirasucci, also made statements at the press conference. The language or the activities were done in our public space, Wilson Park, by this suspect. Uh, in fact, it's nauseating to absolutely anybody in our community. We are a fully diverse community. Any one of my uh, citizens who is hurt, I hurt for them as well. And, and I think we all should. And to the victims, I want to apologize uh, on behalf of our city. This is not conduct that we accept or believe in. And uh, truly, you know you're safe and, and sound in the city of Torrance. Racism against any community is unacceptable. You know, I lived in Torrance for over 20 years. I raised my daughter uh, here, and uh, when my daughter accidentally saw the video footage of this woman uh, ranting against a, uh, an Asian American woman uh, in Wilson Park, you know, which is kind of like a symbolic center of this Torrance community. And it, it, it just horrified my daughter and it horrified me because this is not the Torrance that I know. Crime reports have been taken for all three incidents. Chief Berg urged anyone with information about the suspect to come forward and call the police department's detectives bureau at 310-618-5570. You can also watch the full press conference at youtube.com slash citycable. The recent incidents caught on camera showed the true power of social media and the influence it can have. In just the first 24 hours from the time the first video surfaced of Lena Hernandez verbally assaulting another park goer, millions had like viewed, shared, and posted about it on Facebook, where it first surfaced, then on Twitter. TMZ, local news stations, and even network news all picking up the story, reporting on the video that went viral. And as powerful as this tool is, local officials heeded caution 
with the use of social media, as this also put an innocent woman's name in the mix of bad press. Chief Berg dispelled rumors and misinformation circulating on the Internet. I would like to now take some time to clear up what's been posted on numerous media platforms. Erroneous, inaccurate information. Number one, the suspect's name is not Vicki Weibel. And there is no indication to suspect that her children, Ms. Weibel's children, work for the Torrance Police Department or any other local law enforcement agency. I want to make that really clear because this woman, whoever she is named Vicki Weibel, now has her name all over the media associated with this horrible matter. In this, when a crime report was made, they delved in and went for the pure facts, not speculation, not hearsay, but the real facts. And they have developed a suspect now uh, who will be found and prosecuted to the full extent of the law. If she violated any crimes, whether local, state, or federal, she will be prosecuted for that. And I hope if there are any other victims out there, and, and I really hope there are no other victims, but if they are, I would hope that they come forward and let us know because uh, conduct like this, as I said, is totally inappropriate, not just in Torrance, but any place. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Assemblyman Marasucci. Torrance police investigators will submit all three cases to the city prosecutor's office. We will be sure to keep you posted on any updates or developments to this story. Just in time for the weekend, the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health released revised orders allowing beachgoers to simply hang out now on the sand. While the beach was only limited to exercise when they first reopened, now passive recreation activities are allowed, like sunbathing and hanging out. You can also bring chairs, canopies, coolers, and just sink your toes into the sand and soak up that Southern California sun. Beach piers can also now reopen in Los Angeles County along with summer beach camp and surf camps. Beach volleyball, however, is still prohibited. While many areas of Los Angeles County were given the green light to reopen, there are still quite a few businesses that still aren't allowed to open just yet. Those include nail salons, tattoo shops, bars and wineries, movie theaters, arcades and bowling alleys, youth sports leagues, basketball and volleyball courts, baseball and soccer fields, live performance theaters and concert venues, casino card rooms, festivals, and amusement parks. Now, when these sectors are allowed to reopen, each business and industry will need to implement their own safety protocols. Now, what you'll find common across the board will be face mask requirements, temperature checks, online reservations, social distancing, contactless payment, and strict cleaning and sanitation guidelines. Well, it won't be long before some of those sectors begin to see reopenings, Californians may be able to plan a day at the nail salon, enjoy a massage, or even get a new tattoo as early as next week under the new state guidance. New state guidelines released yesterday state these services could reopen starting Friday, June 19th in counties where health officials allow it. Reopening here in Southern California will be based on LA County public health approval. Now, like many things during COVID-19, these services will not look like how we remember. Workers and customers will be required to wear face masks and stringent cleaning practices must be in place. Nail salon workers are also encouraged to wear face shields and use disposable gloves. Salons are also encouraged to install plastic partitions with cutouts for hands between workers and customers. Nail polish should no longer be on displays and instead they must ask the customer to choose a color from a palette that can be disinfected. Technicians will be asked to throw away nail files, buffers and other items after each use. Other services cleared to open beginning next week include facials, electrolysis, waxing and massage therapy. California's Head of Health and Human Services, Mark Galley, said positive test rates and hospitalizations are remaining stable statewide, and the state has hospital capacity for a surge as it moves ahead with reopening. A pilot program was proposed in the downtown Torrance area this week. 
offering restaurants there some options to expand their dining capacity. Here's a mock-up of what Sartori Avenue could look like if the city implemented a temporary al fresco style dining option. The Office of Economic Development along with Public Works and Community Development proposed temporarily blocking off a part of Sartori Avenue in downtown Torrance to allow additional seating for local restaurants. This would allow eateries who are currently limiting to serving at 60% capacity to increase their ability to serve more customers. Members of the Downtown Torrance Business Association were introduced to this pilot program, which will also be presented to city council members on Tuesday, June 16th at their next meeting. Well, summer is officially here, at least for many families who celebrated their last day of school this week. And for those looking to have some fun outdoors, you'll be happy to hear at least 28 state parks have now reopened. California state park officials say these sites have limited camping ability until June 21st and reminded visitors with existing reservations for June 22nd or later that they will be notified by email. Visitors will be required to maintain physical distancing and avoid congregating with others outside of their immediate household. Park officials said modifications have been made to reduce the risk of exposure to COVID-19. While restrooms and showers will be open, guided tours and indoor facilities like museums and visitor centers will remain closed until further notice. You can go to parks.ca.gov. U.S. top infectious disease specialist and White House Coronavirus Task Force member Dr. Anthony Fauci says he's cautiously optimistic that a second wave of COVID-19 cases may not happen after all if states handle cases properly. Dr. Fauci says despite an increase in COVID-19 cases seen in several states, it may not necessarily indicate a second wave of infections to happen as many have predicted, saying while it could happen, it is not inevitable. He advises the public to continue to maintain social distance and continue to wear that face mask in public. According to the CDC, close to 80% of Americans self-isolated in the last month and 74% wore face coverings in public either often or always. Residents in New York and Los Angeles did so about 90% of the time. Discover Torrance, the city's official visitors bureau, is getting ready to welcome back visitors as many different industries begin to open back up. Restaurants, retail shops, Delamo Fashion Center, hotels, breweries, and even Torrance Beach are now allowing visitors to come back and simply hang out. On Discover Torrance's website, you'll find accommodations in the city, various places to visit, and great tools to help plan either a staycation for locals or a fun-filled weekend for visitors. You can go to discovertorrance.com. The Torrance Cultural Arts Foundation is excited to share a fun new way to see live entertainment from the comfort of your own home. It's called Toka Hi, To Go, and for a set and fee, people can choose to send a song performance video or an actual artist to your home or workplace to perform live, of course, socially distanced. All you have to do is fill out the order form online and TOKA members will follow up. Singers and performers offer a socially distanced live performance. Performances range from taiko drum artists to jazz singers. Online, you'll find the various artists who can be booked for your special occasion. Go to torrentsarts.org for more information. The Torrance Certified Farmers Market was busy today as thousands came out to enjoy some sunshine and fresh produce. The Torrance Cares Farmers Market curbside pickup also continues. Shoppers who placed orders by noon the day before were able to pick up curbside between 11 a.m. till noon. This service was launched to assist seniors with limited mobility as well as those with underlying health conditions. Today, shoppers were able to snatch up some jalapenos and sweet Fresno peppers at Black Sheep Farms, cherries, apricots, peaches, plums, and corn from various vendors were also available along with freshly roasted peanuts. Yum! The farmer's market takes place every Saturday and Tuesday from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. at Wilson Park. 
As a reminder, shoppers must wear face coverings while at the farmer's market and must practice social distancing while shopping. Shoppers are also encouraged to leave family members at home and send just one person per household. The Torrance Unified School District may have wrapped up the 2020 school year, but one program that will continue is the highly sought after free meal program. TUSD announced free meals will continue through the summer with meal distributions to take place on Mondays and Thursdays. Now, what's new about this program is that on Mondays, three days worth of meals will be distributed. And on Thursdays, four days worth of meals distributed. Meal pickup locations include Carr, Edison, and Torrance Elementary Schools and J.H. Hull Middle School. The summer meal program runs through August 25th. For more information, go to TUSD.org. With Father's Day coming up, we want to celebrate dads, father figures, and the men in your life. Email us a photo of your special person, his name, and we'll be sure to share it on our Father's Day show. That's coming up on Sunday, June 21st. Wrapping up graduation week here in Torrance, we want to celebrate the class of 2020 and all of your big milestones. Congratulations to Erin Alexis Louie. She recently promoted from Casimir Middle School. During her time in middle school, she was on the honor roll and maintained a 4.0 GPA. Now she is quite an accomplished young lady. She received the California Junior Scholarship Federation Honor Award, the award for outstanding participation in the Students in Government page with the City of Torrance, the award for outstanding academic excellence by the U.S. Secretary of Education, and the award for outstanding service to school as Student Council Secretary. She enjoys tennis, piano, and is a big fan of K-pop. She's excited to start high school in the fall. Congratulations to all of our graduates. Now, whether it's a preschool promotion or college graduation and every milestone in between, send us your photo and let us know what school you are graduating from. We'll be sure to share it on our show. Email us at COVID19today at torrentca.gov. Well, before we go at the end of each program, we like to share stories from our community feel-good pictures, images, and videos that remind us of how resilient our community is and reflect how Torrance truly cares. Thank you to the partnership with the Torrance South Bay YMCA staff and Torrance Memorial Medical Center were able to continue working as essential workers while having child care services provided by the YMCA. On the last day of the program, many of the children shared how much they enjoyed the YMCA and the staff and how much their services were appreciated. Hi, I'm Cassie. I'm with the YMCA. Today, sadly, is our last day here at Torrance Memorial. We just want to say thank you so much for all of the wonderful staff here. We loved being here. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Cairo. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to all the staff that work here. You guys took really good care of us. And I would like to say um, thank you to the kitchen staff to give us this wonderful food. I'm so thankful. Hi, I'm Anthony. Hi, I'm Alex. And this is our last day at the YMCA. It's Friday, so it's animal day. We're wearing bear costumes. Um, and I'm thankful for all the YMCA staff has done and Torrance Memorial for, uh, for letting us into this um, giant room. And um, I like to thank the kitchen staff too, because today we got steak. It's really good. I'm Richard and I'm at the Y, and I'm at the Y, it's off my last day here, but thank you for everything at the Torrance Medical Center. Hi, I'm Chloe. I want to say thank you to YMCA staff. Thank you, YMCA. We love seeing how local organizations continue to partner with the community to show their support of the important role of essential workers. It's just one of the many ways we're seeing how 
Torrance Cares. Now, if you have a great story or have pictures or videos you'd like to share or just want to say hello, please email us at COVID19today at torrentca.gov. Stay informed by signing up at torrentca.gov slash Torrance Alerts. Subscribe to City Cable's YouTube channel and be sure to like the city's Facebook page. That's our update for COVID-19 today. We hope you'll join us again tomorrow at our special time. Due to this week's extended council meeting, COVID-19 today will be broadcasting at 4 p.m. on Sunday. Christine Lee will be in the studio tomorrow to bring you the latest updates. Be safe, stay healthy, and thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time.